Everybody's shoes tied? We're going to talk about tying your shoes today. I see a couple having to tie them right now. It's important to have your shoes tied on tightly. Why? You know, um, I'll get back to that, but I want to start this by saying I like to go barefooted. Does anybody else like to go barefooted? I mean, oh, yeah, it's okay. All of you barefooted folks, clap your hands. You know, well, okay, me and Patsy, we're happy. We like to go barefooted. You know, I used to, I used to kind of make the staff uncomfortable around here. I, uh, I, I have my own little, my own little gym at home now, so I work out there and I, and I take showers not before I come to the church. But back in the day, uh, I used to work at the University of Arkansas, and I would show up here, and uh, we had showers in the, in uh, Building C, or and I had had one after we remodeled. I had one in there in my office, and so I could come in and take a shower. And I would go around all day until Angie would tell me, Pastor, put your socks and shoes on. I mean, I just run around the office all the time. And the only reason it really bothered him because when we get in a staff meeting, I always put my feet up on the desk. <laughs> and I always try to make sure I cross them right in front of Angie. She'd be like, Pastor, put your socks and shoes on. It's disgusting. You know, which my feet are awesome, but I don't know why she said that. I like to go barefooted. I, I don't do it as much as I used to because my feet are not as calloused on the bottoms they used to be. And sometimes when I go outside now, and I do, I go out in my backyard, but we got a bunch of pine trees. We got them pine cones. And, man, those things are rough on the bottom of your feet. But uh, I, I, I take my chances anyway. I go barefooted all the time around the house if I can. And uh, even out in the yard, and if I might even go down, to, down the street or whatever, I, I, I don't go try to run in bare feet. But I just like to be barefooted. I, I, I just enjoy that. Uh, but, uh, but I do realize that when I do put shoes on, that I need to make sure that I tie the laces. And I need to tie them up tight so they won't fall off. You know, one, I shouldn't tell these stories of myself, but one of my favorite things to do when I was a kid in school, y'all, everybody put your hands over yours right here for a minute. I don't want y'all to hear this. Don't do this because they'll, they'll actually kick you out of school and probably put you in prison today for some of the things I used to do. But we had the desks, some of you will remember this, they may still have them. You sat in the desk, you sat down in the seat, had a desk here, and you had a book thing underneath you. And it was perfect for the person sitting behind you to put their feet up on that rack. Does anybody remember that? And so, you know, I would get bored in school. I'm just going to be honest. Um, I'd do the best I could to listen and pay attention time to time. But uh, every once in a while, it would just, it would work out for me to notice that the person sitting behind me was really paying attention to the teacher and I would through the course of the class reach back and tie their shoes to my desk so I would tie this shoe to this side of the desk and then I'd move over and I'd tie that shoe to that desk and then when the bell rang I'd jump on and say come on Jerry I'll race you to the cafeteria and then I'd stand back and watch Jerry go it was so cool they would just, I mean, they would, they would say, you know, they would take the challenge and they'd jump up, but their feet were tied to the desk. They'd jump up and they'd just go right out onto the floor, floor like, a, like a flapping fish. And then there would be some words exchanged that usually weren't good toward me. And, and I would go ahead and leave while they were untying their shoes from the desk. But, uh, you know, that, that was a fun, fun thing for me to do. Uh, was to tie someone else's shoes up tightly to my desk. Now, the soldier who always wins has to wear his shoes and he has to have them tied up tightly so that they will function as they are designed to function. How many of you have heard the, most of this series so far? I hope that if you weren't here in person, you've at least been able to catch up online. We are on this fifth part of the series talking about having our feet shod with the preparation of peace because we're recognizing that we need to have on the full armor of God. All the armor of God has been provided us and we need to have this on. So, so far in this series, here's what we've learned. The, the first week we learned that the battle is coming. Amen? The second week we learned that we better get prepared for the evil day. The next week we talked about we need to get the belt on the belt of truth. Then we talked about how that we have to get that breastplate of righteousness. 
And then we have to now put on these shoes. And we want to talk about their relation to the rest of the armor. Now remember the belt is the belt of truth. Who's the truth? Jesus said, I am the way, the life, and the... Jesus is the truth. He is at the core of everything in our life. Everything hinges upon what happens at the core of our strength. Jesus is the truth. He is the core. The breastplate then would be put on. Remember, they, they, we call them sinking into our wings because they, they separated. When you, when you separated and went to put them on, they looked like wings, and you would sit them back on and tie them up. They would then attach in various places to the belt and rest on the belt. We learned that righteousness rests on the truth of Jesus. That that breastplate of righteousness is attached to and resting on that belt. Amen? And so now we're going to discuss what's happening with these shoes. Look at Ephesians chapter 6 verse 15. Modern King James says, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now, just like we've done every week so far, we've, take, we've broken the verses down and we've done a little word study. This word study won't take very long, but I want to give it to you. Here's how it goes. The first part of it says, and your feet shod. And your feet shod means to bind under your feet your shoes or sandals. Basically saying that you need to have them on correctly and tied up so that they'll function correctly. So to bind under your feet with shoes or sandals. The next words are with the preparation. Who wants to take a guess at what the word preparation here means? The word here means preparation. All right? So it also means ready or fit. The next words there are of the gospel. The gospel equals the good news or the good message of Jesus Christ. And the last word there is of peace. Peace means uh, it equals quietness or rest. So if we were going to re-word re, um, this verse in terms of what we've just learned that each word means, it would, it would read something like this. Tie your shoes on correctly so that you will be ready to take the good news of peace. But the question is where? Doesn't, it doesn't say where. I suppose that's wherever, especially when I find out what the good news of peace is. The good news of peace is... That Jesus, the truth, is also the Prince of Peace and the Savior of all mankind. Look at Isaiah 9, 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So Jesus, the truth, is the Prince of Peace. So now let's tie this together real quick before we go any further. Here's what we're seeing. The belt of truth is the word, which is Jesus, is at the core. The breastplate is attached and resting on the core. It's righteousness. So now we have the ability to live righteous lives. And then the shoes allow us to move through life with peace that comes from walking in the truth. Somebody say amen. Jesus, the prince of peace, is the source of our peace as we traverse through our lives. So now let's look at the function of the shoes. What was the function? There's two parts of the shoe. Actually separated, but there's two parts considered when it says prep your feet shod with the preparation of peace. Talking about two different things. He's talking about the greaves, which I'll explain. And he's talking about the sandals. Now, the greaves were a, uh, they were made of brass or metal. And they, they were curved. They started up around the knee, they went all the way down to the foot, and they were curved so that they fit the shin and almost covered the calf. They went around to cover the calf. They're made of brass. On the inside of them, they probably had a little bit of material to make them a little bit more comfortable, but they were not comfortable to wear. But the soldier wanted to wear them in spite of the discomfort because he knew... That wearing the greaves was going to protect his legs, his shins, his calves from rough terrain, from brush, from thorns. But not just that. When he got in battle, that enemy would be trying to kick him in the leg to break his leg. And he couldn't do it because of the greaves. He'd be trying to cut him with a sword and he couldn't do it. He'd be trying to stab him with a spear and he couldn't do it because the greaves were protecting the leg. How many of you know the leg needs to be protected because you can't stand up without it? And so he would wear the greaves to protect his knees and all the way down to his ankle. Secondly were the sandals. 
They were made of heavy straps. They were not solid. It was not a leather, solid leather shoe for a couple of reasons, I think. But one of the reasons was, I believe, they were made of this strong leather that tied up, laced up, and tied up all around. You can look at the pictures of them, the way they kind of they weave them on around their calf and tie them up. They are made of these straps of leather so that the foot can breathe. These guys are taking these long hikes and for the most part aren't wearing socks or anything like that. So these shoes need to be able to breathe. And so uh, this, is, this is what they look like. But there's something else that you need to understand about these shoes. They had spikes on the bottom of them. Or or. or, or like knobs, but they sometimes depend on the, the terrain, I suppose. But it was kind of like a track shoe. Any of y'all ever wore, if you ever wore track shoes, it was kind of like that, except there were a lot more. It covered the whole, the, these spikes covered the whole sole. And in many cases, they actually had a spike on the end of each sandal on the toe, protruding forward. Uh, why the design? I think one of the reasons why that the sandal is made of the straps instead of solid leather is so that the the shoe would not fill up with water. And I'm not trying to be gross, but in some cases, so the shoe wouldn't fill up with blood. Uh, this, everything would be able to drain out through this leather. So the feet have to be healthy in order to protect the soldier in the most precarious situations. Now, if you've got your pen and paper, you get, start getting ready to write this down. I'm getting ready to give you three words, three things that these shoes did to protect the feet from any attack or wound. Are you ready for this? The shoes protected the feet so that the soldier could, number one, abide. So that he could stand where he was. Because he's been told in this verse to stand. Am I right? He's been told in this verse to be able to stand. So... He needs to be able to stand rooted firmly into the ground so the enemy can't move him. That's the reason why he has spikes on the bottom of his shoe. Because they are digging into the ground. And now he is rooted firmly in a position where his commander is telling him to remain. Battle might be over for now, but the enemy's coming back. Remember, we've learned that as we're going. He's not ever going to quit. He's not that smart. He's never going to quit. So we're going to get opportunity after opportunity to defeat him. But when we win, having done all means you've already won once. But now having done all standing, this is what it's talking about, to be able to firmly rooted in a rooted fashion, abide in that location so that as he comes back and back and back, you never... Uh, having to retreat but you're standing your ground with confidence peace gives you that confidence to stand your ground we are immovable rooted abiding in truth going nowhere when the enemy attacks i want you to look at philippians 4 7 says and the peace of god who's the peace of god and the peace of god which passes all understanding shall Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Somebody say amen. How am I able to keep this ground that I'm standing on? The peace of God that passes all understanding is keeping my heart and mind through Christ Jesus. I am therefore, because of the spikes, able to abide. I have my shoes on. They are on tight. They're tied up right. They're functioning correctly. And they are holding me rooted in peace. While I'm living righteously because of the truth that is at the core of my life. Isn't that good stuff? The second thing that these shoes did, they made it possible for the soldier to attack. Number one is abide. Number two is attack. Now you got to understand something. When this soldier was moving, when the commanding officer said to the soldiers, march, they marched whether there was anything in front of them or not. If you had been an enemy or if you had been a bystander that made the mistake of falling in front of them while they were marching, you were about to get trampled to death. You still with me? He would march 
trample and stomp you right into the ground with those, with those spikes. And if you tried to fight him, guess what he would do? He would kick you with that sandal that had a spike on the front of it. Either way, these shoes that he was wearing were vicious. They were merciless weapons against an enemy or against anybody else who might make a mistake of getting in his way. When Satan's soldiers attack us, we are, because of scripture, because of the shoes, we are able to trample right over and right through them when we're walking in truth. So when the enemy tries to steal your peace, the prince of peace, the truth, whom your life of righteousness is, is resting on, he gives you the order by his power to just mow the enemy over brutally. Somebody say amen. amen. Romans 16, 20. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. So be it. That's how it is. That's the way it's going to be. That's what that means. He says to you that when the enemy comes against you, you just stomp right over him, trample him unmercifully, stomp him, trample him, mow him over brutally because you have the truth. Because you have the peace that just surpasses all of that. It stomps through it all. Do you hear it? Do you see it? Peace that passes understanding is the peace that allows me to trample and stomp my way through whatever the enemy tries to do to destroy me. Isn't that good stuff? So now, number one, these shoes are going to help us abide. Number two, they're going to help us to attack. Number three, they're going to help us to advance. Because when it's time to move forward, because you have the spikes, you have the ability to get traction, even if the terrain is wet, if it's slippery, if the terrain is harsh, if you'd been in battle, blood was slippery, for you to be able to advance would have been a difficult thing to do. But because you have the shoes on, you are enabled to move regardless of the conditions around you. Now, some of y'all are way smarter than me because you always get ahead of me. You say, oh, I know where this is going. Church, we are not to get distracted all the time fighting. With the enemy even. Because the enemy keeps coming at us trying to keep us distracted from what is our purpose. What is our purpose? Be advancing the gospel. Am I right? But so many times we're distracted by the enemy's uh, attempts to, even though we know we're going to win, we're going to win, we're going to win. But we can spend so much of our life just fighting and never advancing. And so we're not to get distracted all the time fighting. We're to be advancing the gospel of peace to the rest of the world. Brings me to Isaiah 52, 7. It says, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good tidings, making peace heard. Peace heard. How about that? Who bring good news, making salvation heard. Who says to Zion, your, your God reigns. So listen to this. I want you to hear this statement. They're not leaving. They're not mad. These are the musicians. They're not going anywhere. Even, listen to this statement. Even your feet that have been made bloody and dirty from kicking the devil are a beautiful sight to the one that you are coming to share the truth with. Isn't that good? When you get there and you share the, the peace that passes understanding, you share the truth with that unbeliever, they don't care how dirty your feet are or what you had to walk through to get to them. Hmm. I go back to the text, but this time I read it from the contemporary English version. Your desire to tell the good news about peace should be like shoes on your feet. So we can't be distracted by what we might have to step on in order to advance the gospel of peace. We can walk confidently and trample over every enemy that dares get in our way. But those shoes have got to be on. They've got to be on right. They've got to be on tightly. We bind. Do you hear this? We bind peace to ourselves tightly so that we'll have the confidence to abide, to attack, to advance 
whenever the Prince of Peace tells us to. And if your shoes are not on tight, the enemy's going to find a way to get you to slip, trip, or fall some way. But the truth will keep you rooted if you tie it on correctly. And now what happens is this. Now you're able to advance among the lost peacefully, but you can advance among the enemy violently. But either way, you're advancing. Huh? Nothing slows you down, nothing stops you, nothing derails you, but you're in perfect peace. Isaiah 26, 3 says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Isn't that good? What a perfect message for us today when all the world around us is freaking out. They're freaking out that they're not going to have some toilet paper. And yet here we are, the Prince of Peace, the one who is the root, at the root, the core of all of our life, the truth on whom we stand, the one who gives us the ability to be protected in righteousness, who has now given us shoes that allow us to stand when we need to, to attack when we need to, and to advance when we need to, And nothing can stand in our way because our feet are shod with the preparation of the peace. Amen? The enemy wants to mess with your footing. He wants to tear up your shoes. Did you know that? It makes sense for him to want to attack your feet. It does. Like, I thought he'd be more interested in attacking my brain. He wants to attack your feet. Let me finish this by telling you a little story. Two doctors and a lawyer boarded a plane. The two doctors got on first and one of them took the window seat. The other one took the middle seat. The aisle seat was open. And down the road came the lawyer. And he sat next to the doctor's. And the flight took off. They're in the air. The lawyer takes off his shoes. He settles in for this flight. And the doctor by the window says, I think I want a Coke. I'm going to go get one. He's thinking, man, if he goes and gets a Coke, he's going to get in my way. I'm just going to, he said, I'll go get it for you. Oh, thank you. So he goes and gets the man a Coke, brings it back, gives it to him. While he was gone, the doctor reached over and took his shoes and put a thumbtack in one of them. He comes back, hands him his Coke. The second one, having seen what happened, thinking it was pretty funny, says, that Coke looks pretty good. I'd like to have one too. And and so the man says, well, I'll go get you one too. So he goes and gets him a Coke. And while he's gone, he picks it up and puts a tack in the other one. He's got a tack in each shoe now. And he doesn't know it. They don't think. And so this goes on until the flight is about to land. And the stewardess says, everybody put your seat back up. Put your tray up. Get your shoes on. And he goes to put his shoes on. And he has tacks in his shoes And he says to the other fellas, how long are our two professions going to have problems? How long are we going to fight? How long are we going to have this hatred and this animosity and this this putting tacks in people's shoes and spitting in each other's coke? We have tacks in our shoes, folks. But they're not in them. They're on the bottom. We got spikes on the bottom of our shoes that help us to abide when we need to. That help us to attack when we're supposed to. That help us to advance all the time for the good news of peace, which is Jesus. Somebody say amen. And so our prayer time today is going to be this 
amazing team leading us in this last song and as they are i want us to do what we do so often you can come to the front if you want you can stay where you're at i don't care how you do it but i want you to run down this list and i want you to let the holy spirit do a self-diagnostic on your soul and i want you to start by asking the holy spirit am i abiding am i abiding am i abiding in the truth so that i can stand firm or am I just kind of falling around? If I, Because if I'm not really standing strong, it means I don't have my shoes on right. If I'm tripping and falling and slipping and failing, it must mean that I don't have my shoes tied on tight. I, I need to have my shoes on tight, Lord, because I want to abide strong. And secondly, am I attacking Am I, am I in attack mode or am I just in abide mode? Am I, am I one of those believers that, that I finally got myself right and it's all I can think about? I'm not going to do nothing else. I'm just going to hold right here and pray that Jesus comes. I'm not going to do nothing. I just got to stay here and try to stay right. And our Lord is saying, man, that's not enough. I mean, you, 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 can, you can walk in righteousness. You can walk in truth. You can walk in peace. If you'll just choose to do it every day, I'll provide you. If you'll put on that whole armor, you can walk in the whole armor. You can live right every day, but it's not enough for you to just get through. I need you to be doing some attacking on the enemy. I need you to be taking some ground. And I need you, thirdly, to be advancing this gospel of peace. It's not enough just to stand here and try to shout it. Sometimes we are so um, preoccupied with our own that we forget how many of us, I didn't, I didn't go to the grocery store during this whole outbreak because I just didn't want to. I don't want to go. But how many of you, when you went, went for the purpose of trying to use this opportunity to be a witness and a light to someone else? Or were you the one that was throwing people out of the way <laughs> trying to get the hand sanitizer? This obstacle is an opportunity. And every obstacle that the enemy throws at us is an opportunity for us to be the light in the dark. To show faith and hope where there seems to not be any. Here is our opportunity. Because we have on the armor. And specifically because we put on the shoes. I'm, I'm strong, Pastor. I'm strong. I'm attacking when he when he comes at me, I kick him, I gum him, I cut him, I push him, I knee him, I hit him with my fist, I stab him. I'm fighting that devil. I hate the devil. I'm fighting the devil. I'm not just here, but I'm I'm strong, I'm fighting, and while I'm doing it, I'm throwing him out of the way so I can say to someone else, Hey, you know why I'm winning this battle? Did you see the way I just stomped his head? Can I tell you why? I'm not gonna spend all my time. I just finally want to battle now. Let me get. No, no, no. Did you see what I just did? To him? I'll get back there in a minute. Did you see what I just did to him? Can I tell you why? Truth is at the core of my life. I'm protected. My vital organs are protected by a breastplate that allows me to live a righteous life. And when times like these happen, I got my shoes on. I am prepared to do everything that the Prince of Peace orders me to do. He's the truth in my life. Full armor, guys. Can you see now? We just hit, we've only hit three pieces of the armor. Can you see why you need all three of those? Can you imagine why he's going to say by the end you need to have on the whole armor? So when you're praying today, I want you to find yourself a place and say, Lord, I need peace in my life. I need more peace in my life. Maybe you do. Maybe you're afraid. I want you to find a place, take those notes, and walk through each one of those words. Abide, attack, advance. And ask the Lord, is my peace level full? Is my peace level where it should be? I don't want to leave this room unless I am full of peace. Because I want to not only stand for you, but I want to do something for you too. Amen? Word.